Hi all, this is Andy from Times with Andy. So today we're gonna to talk about customization of rackets. Um, this was a question from one of the, the followers of the channel. So my opinion is that um, if you're going to buy a new racket or, or, or used racket, if you don't like it stock, then just move on. You should use something else. There are plenty of rackets out there. Um, but if you do like it stock and, and you want to tweak it to best suit you, then I say go ahead and do that. Um, so whether or not to customize, I say it depends. Now, um, I'll use the analogy of a PC versus Mac. And um, my belief is, having used both, I actually have both right now, is that a Mac out of the box is pretty much good enough for most people. It has everything um, that most people would need um, if they want to do iMovie, GarageBand, um, like all that stuff is, is all included. Um, but a PC, um, although it's a bit harder to use, um, it, I feel like it's a better bang for your buck and like you could customize it, add additional software um, uh, because of some of the software you, you would need to add some more, right? So that's, that's how I feel with um, rackets and that rackets, these rackets are designed really well. Like if, you've, if you get a chance, um, check out some of Tennis Nerd's videos or Tennis Warehouse on how ra the Yonex rackets are made, how the head rackets are made, and it's just really supreme quality. Um, and they're designed for most uh, recreational players to use. But at the same time, um, if you know what your needs are, and as a rec player or even as, as a pro player, like all, all the pro players, they know what feels good or, and what their, their, their needs are, then I'd say, um, and you're willing to uh, uh, invest the time in customization, I'd say go ahead and do it. Um, and 80 to 90% of your improvement would be because of your game, because you're working at your game, your fitness, your, your, uh, your, uh, your fitness, your stroke quality, your strategy. But I think the other 10% is where equipment could, could play a role. So now that I have given sort of the, I've, I've laid the land, I'll talk a bit about customization. I have two rackets here, um, my trusty ProSef 90 and VCore 95. Um, I'm gonna talk first about the VCore 95 since that's the one I, I think I've customized the most. Um, so it comes stock with uh, um, the Yonex synthetic leather grip, or basically it's a synthetic grip. Um, in general, I prefer um, a leather grip, so I re replace that leather grip, or synthetic grip with a Yonex leather. It's a thicker leather grip, and I, I enjoy that thickness. Um, and that adds uh, about 8 to 10 grams of weight, and that also makes the, the racket a bit more headlight. Um, if you want to add additional weight to make a more headlight, there are a couple different ways to do it. Um, the way that I generally recommend is the leather grip, obviously, um, but at an additional weight, you could put um, you could put lead tape above your handle, but underneath the grip. And um, one thing I'd be aware of is where you put this lead tape. Um, if it, it plays a lot different if you bunch all the lead tape at the bottom, or you bunch it up over the top, or if you spread it across evenly, it just it's a different feel. Um, so that's one way. The other way is to, some rackets have removable butt caps and then, so you can remove the butt cap and then insert different weights in here. So you could, um, insert lead, insert blue tack. I think I've used plumber's putty as well. Um, the pros, uh, they use, uh, silicone. Um, but what's key here is put some sort of stopper before you insert the weight. And not saying that I've, I've made this mistake before, but maybe someone I've heard of has made the mistake where they put lead tape in the um, handle of the racket. And once they made a couple swings, it traveled all the way through the racket. And then in order to get it out, um, I had to take a hose and then hose down the racket and just uh, after like 30 minutes, like peel off most of the lead tape from inside. So put a stopper, avoid that. Um, so that's weight in the handle. Um, next pl place is weight in the throat and in the, uh, at six o'clock. Um, so what this does uh, at the 
throat especially is um, typical racket balance points are maybe about right here. Um, it, it obviously would depend on the racket. Oh, let's see if I can balance this. Nope. 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 It's going down. So, so yeah. So somewhere around right here. Right. So add in weight to the throat of your racket would increase the static weight. Um, it will have a little bit of increase on the swing weight, but it shouldn't affect the balance of the racket. Um, same thing with six. Six would probably uh, increase your balance just a little bit, but um, uh, or make your racket a little more head heavy. Uh, but it sort of has the same feeling as uh, as adding it around the throat. And to me, like that just leads to a stiffer feeling racket, and I, I don't like that. And it's not. It's not the good type of stiffness. I, I say the good type of stiffness is kind of like what you get in some of the Babolat rackets, the, the Pure Arrow, for example, where uh, it's, it's very stiff, so it kind of just let the racket uh, do the work. But at the throat, um, it's a bit too much for me. So the other typical place is at three and nine. Some people do, f I know Djokovic used to do like four and eight, but I think he does three and nine now. And that adds stability. Uh, I think it might increase your torsional stability. Somebody fact check me on this one. Um, but adding one gram at three and nine adds about two points of swing weight. And so for my Yonixes, I generally like doing this, put in um, the weight at three and nine. And I'd say for players who are like serving, serving volley players, um, typically, right? Um, I'd say you use three and nine to, uh, for your racket and then, um, Players who like to swing through the ball, um, I and the, the the best examples I'd use are like Djokovic, who would prefer in general his strokes are more through the ball, and um, Rafa and Roger, uh, for example, they do more of a, a whip, where they're whipping the racket um, through, but like um, really rolling their their arms to to provide that windshield. So with their stroke mechanics, it makes sense that Roger and Rafa prefer to add it at 12, which really enables that whip in action. And um, they do this in their, their pro staffs or their uh, peer arrows. Um, but Novak would add his around three and nine. Personally, I, I want to get a compromise of the two. So I feel like in the Yonix, it works really well to add it around 10 and two or maybe like 1.30 and 10.30, and which is what I've done. So I've gone over all three. Um, add in weight at, at uh, 12 o'clock would lead to, uh, three grams of weight leads to about 10 points of a uh, uh, swing weight increase. So one gram is about 3.3 .3 points swing weight increase. Great. So that's the, the weight. Uh, now, whether to do lead tape or tungsten, I think it's a lot of it's personal preference. Um, uh, the, as far as I know, tungsten is safer than lead tape. At the same time, I, I say like if you're using lead tape, as long as you're, you're careful and wash your hands after the use, um, like don't lick the lead tape. Like I should put a disclaimer don't lick lead tape or don't lick tungsten tape either. Um, so that's, I think that's the reason why people are moving towards like tungsten and, and copper. But if you watch your pros, like all of them, uh, at least that put lead tape at three and nine or put tape at, at three and nine, they all seem to use lead tape. And I think there are a couple of reasons for this. Um, one, tungsten tape is, the tungsten tape, at least from Tennis Warehouse, is great. I absolutely love it. Um, adhesive is really good, um, but it's one and a half times, uh, uh, yeah, I believe it's one and a half times the density of your typical quarter inch lead tape. And what this would mean is, especially if you're using um, just a single strip of lead tape, is that your uh, tungsten tape is going to be two thirds the, the, the length. And so you're going to get more concentration of the weight in a spot. And for me, um, in my amateur level, I still feel the difference between three grams of tungsten tape at 3.9 versus three grams of lead tape at 3.9. Um, I feel like the more concentrated weight kind of flattens my ball out a bit. And the um, distributed weight, I, I feel uh, it's, it's not as you don't notice the weight as much. 
So that's my take. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is the primary reason of doing customization is if you're to buy two rackets, um, the manufacturers obviously try to make the rackets as close as possible, but there's gonna be some discrepancy and this would lead to differences in your static weight, your um, balance points, as well as your swing weight. So oftentimes you would either add weight to the racket in order to match your two your two rackets and yet there's a really nice tool at tennis warehouse tennis warehouse university for um which shows you kind of where you should add weight based on your current racket specs or you could um take uh tennis warehouse i believe they also give you the option of uh using the mrt service where you just pay i think 10 bucks or so and then they they match your rackets if you're buying a couple of rackets from them or you could take them to your racket to a local pro shop and um, have them uh, spec it out and then you could add the, the appropriate weight to match your rackets. So that's uh, my take on customization and um, like the worst that could happen, actually <laughs> the worst that can happen is you could add a bunch of weight and you could get injured because you don't know what you're doing. But um, if you just add in weight incrementally and uh, uh, playing around, then it's, it's a good way to, to test. And like I say, play, have go play with a good buddy and a good patient buddy, right? Who wouldn't mind you like taking breaks every 10 minutes to adjust the weight and then seeing what works best for you. And um, I think that's sort of the, the way that it, it works and um, the way that I found it to be most helpful. So I hope this content was helpful. If there's anything else that you'd like to see, please let me know. Again, like, subscribe. I'm trying to grow this channel. Um, as you can see, I, I try to be as organic and real as possible. So I give you the contents that hopefully you'd appreciate. So this is Andy from Sense with Andy. Play smart and see results.